Hello everybody and welcome back to the forest. You're chilling with me, Resco Tier. Today's video is gonna be done a little bit differently because I seem to have somehow muted myself while recording this episode. And I now have to do a voiceover for it. I'm coming up to this green circle. And I remembered that I've already explored this one, but I can't mark it off that I've explored it. But came up with a good idea on how to do so. I get out a tarp. And I attempt to put it on the floor, but the corridor is so small that I can't put it here. So I go down a little bit further, and I put the tarp in this room instead. And what this will do is it'll make an icon on your map, a little house icon. So that way you know you know that you've already explored this cave. Now, I know that I didn't explore this cave yet because there is a door. But I don't want to accidentally come back here a third time thinking I didn't explore the cave. I'm going to just leave this here for now. And we'll just continue on with our adventure. So you can now see on the GPS that there is a little house right where the green dot is. And I use these to navigate around the forest to cover my tracks of, like I said before, of the caves that I've already explored. But don't accidentally come back there and explore them again. I am now making my way up to the further cave. Because if you look on the GPS as well, you can see that cave next to me has already been crossed off. That was the cave that, not crossed off, but it has a little house icon there. You might not be able to see it, but I can see it. So I know that I've already been to that cave, and that cave was in the last episode. So we're going even further up towards the mountain to see what's going on over here. We are here at our first cave. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on on the outside. The ice is frozen. There's some people stuck in the ice that I assume are hanging there. And then there's this little pile of skulls with some money on it. Nothing really much to it. You can see that going into the cave, there's this rope. You need to get the zip line. There's nothing down here. It's just an empty canister. Uh, I think that's just a hint saying, hey, you have to go get uh, the rebreather maybe, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it's a hint. I'm assuming that there's a lot more to this cave, and it's probably going to require me going into the water to explore whatever the heck's down there. There's not much else to this cave. There was basically nothing in it besides a few air canisters. So we're just going to move on to the next cave. Okay, we are now coming up to our second cave. And there's a little bit of tents right here on the floor next to this one is a tarp rope and I can save money and there is now a can opener. So you can see that I actually crashed not far away from this cave and if I had just come up here and explored I would have already had a can opener but I didn't do that. However I will keep that in mind for future episodes of course. Going into the cave there's just crates in here. They're mostly just full of rope. I think this is just a way to get rope because I honestly have no idea what these caves are for. Maybe they're just here just to be here for now and they'll develop them later, I would assume. But as of right now, I'm not sure. You also can't put a tarp on the floor of those caves. They're just too bumpy. So you have to put it outside of the cave entrances somewhere. Virginia came to say hello to me while I was out traveling. She offered me some berries. Uh, I tried to take them, but I couldn't because they just vanished in the floor. Sorry, Virginia. I put a GPS tracker on her, though, so I could see where she was at all times. And I'm going to assume that I can now have her as a companion. Also, I can't change the icon of the GPS. I wish I could. Maybe they'll fix that in the future. But as of right now, it's just default to whatever the default icon is. And then tested to see what was actually in the canned food. So I very quickly just opened it and poured it out it looked nasty look at that that looks gross as hell and then it was cat food and i ate it and cat food is actually extremely good look at that look at that freaking food bar just fill it right up i also said in the last video how not to put a hot key to the flask that has been fixed and you can now put a hot key to the flask i left a pin comment in the last video too but if you didn't see it it has been fixed. All right, and again, I put a tarp. This was before I knew that I couldn't put a tarp on this ground here. It has to be a nice flat ground. You can't put it on the bumpy ground at all. I don't know why that's a thing, but it is a thing. So I put a tarp here to mark it on the map that I have explored it, and I continued on my adventure after. Okay, we are now coming on to the next cave. As you can see, this is actually a pretty nice spot. I like the way it looks. Got a nice uh, frozen lake. I would not walk on that lake, by the way. The ice doesn't look 
thick at all. It looks extremely thin. It looks like if you tapped it with your foot, it would just break instantly. But it doesn't. That I'm aware of. But I'm do I do believe that it can break. I'm not a hundred percent sure though. So don't don't hold me to that. There is again nothing in here at all. There is no story item or anything towards the story that helps you understand it any at all. It is just a big empty cave and there's a few boxes you can hit in the cave and that's about it. It's just full of rope. And I I believe these are ways that people can get rope easier. I think that's what this cave is meant for. Uh, just for now, I do believe that they will most likely improve upon these caves in the future and add more to them. But again, I think it's just a way to get rope easier. Once again, I set up a tarp inside the cave so I can mark that I explored it outside of the cave. I then started to head towards the next closest cave. I realized here that the cave was just downstream, so I grabbed my sled and I just went for it. And at first it didn't work, but just wait. And here we go. Now we're now we're zooming right down the stream. This is, this would be a good way to explore and get around faster a bit. If it wasn't for all the rocks in the water, but it is still a fun way to do it. I'm not sure how to just get off of the sled. So I just hit every single button <laughs> and uh, now I'm actually just zooming right past my destination. And then something happened here where I got off it. I think maybe the water was a bit deep and that's what happened. All right. Once again, heading into another cave. This cave, however, is also a dud. There is, however, a dude sitting in the chair in this cave. And it looks like he was holding something at one point. And I believe the best thing for him to have would be to dress this guy up in um, uh, snow, uh, like a snow outfit and him holding a snowboard. And then we can use the snowboard to just go up to the mountain and snowboard down. Because why not? Even though you have a sled, it would still be cool to use a snowboard, in my opinion. It doesn't have to be added to the game. But because the sled is just fine the way it is. But if they wanted an idea to put here, that would be my idea. I then put up another tent to mark that I explored this cave and continued on my adventure. Instead of going towards a cave, I decided to take a risk and head towards the green dot on the map instead. Since I had saved the game, it wouldn't matter if I took this risk because I could just revert back to my other save to save a few minutes of walking. And we arrived at this nice flat area. That is covered in snow, but I believe if there wasn't snow here, it might be a place to land airplanes. Because right there, you can see it in the screen, is an airplane. And if you go to the airplane, you can see this pamphlet on the wing. The pamphlet is for the luxury bunker community. That's what it advertises on the front. There is also a leather jacket inside the airplane itself. I went all the way to the other end of this strip. And there was nothing at the other end. There's a, like a few more carts, golf carts with uh, stuff you can get inside containers. But other than that, there wasn't really much. I did decide, however, to get up close and personal with a moose. And I ended up killing it just to see what would happen. And it didn't really put up a fight. So poor moose. But after skinning the moose, you get some hide, which is nice. And you get three pieces of meat. I then started to make my way towards the green dot again. And as I got closer, it was actually a little cannibal community and decided not to fight any of those guys. And I assumed that since there was no cave around here, this is most likely somewhere to dig. And I don't have the shovel, but this would be the spot where I would assume I have to dig. It looks like it anyway, but I did not stay here very long. I actually ran away because I did not want to die out here after getting the, uh, the leather jacket from the plane and the pamphlet. I very quickly decided to demonstrate again that you can go into your inventory and eat pills. Your health will heal over time and it will pause the game. You see that the skinny was behind me. The skinny isn't attacking me or anything like that. And I'm able to heal. I'm able to eat. And I think this is fine for normal mode. But it might become an issue in hard mode. Because I kind of think it's a little bit cheating. But it is what it is what it is. If they add another difficulty. Then it, they should keep that both in normal and hard. And they should add it so that you can't just pause the game. 
by opening your inventory when uh, you play on like, I don't know, I'm going to call it realism is what I'm going to call the mode, but obviously we call it like hard survival maybe or something else, but I would just call it realism to be honest. Instead of continuing to run away, I decided to uh, sled away. I like the animation for filling up the canteen. Very nice. Coming up to the cave it is another dead cave. Once again, there is nothing inside this cave. Just a few boxes. I assume to get rope and stuff. Maybe some, uh, I don't know. I assume to get rope and stuff. This is also when I realized that I couldn't put a tarp inside those caves. I had to put it outside. I threw down a tarp to mark that I had explored this area. And I continued my adventure towards the next closest cave. Coming up to the next cave, I realized that this cave is also a dud. There is once again nothing in this cave besides a few boxes to collect materials. So I marked the cave and continued on my adventure. I decided to add this part in because you can see that the blue bar is pretty much half of my stamina. And in order to get that to go away, you have to use the torch. Which is why I said earlier, it is best to walk around in the winter with a torch out so that you can maximize your stamina usage. I also want to say that the game, again, looks very, very good. I'm actually playing Plinko here, if anyone knows what Plinko is. I then flew off this ledge here and flew into the lake. Thank God it was frozen because that would have sucked. But also, thank God the ice didn't break because that also would have sucked. I decided to set up the tarp before going into the cave because I assumed that this would have at least been a cave to actually explore in. But I was unfortunately disappointed and it was not. It is yet another cave with just materials in it. So I saved the game real quick and continued on with my adventure. I decided to take a risk and run across this frozen lake to this green dot that was just on the other side. This green dot actually turned out to be a cave, but it also turned out to be much more than a cave. It's actually a facility. And unfortunately, I don't have the green card to keep exploring. So I left this cave. I didn't mark it so I could come back to it later. And I decided that it would be better to just go to the beach cave is what I'm going to call it because clearly every other cave around this mountaintop is pretty much nothing except for this one. This mountaintop view is actually really nice. And in the video, I was saying how there should be an achievement for reaching the highest point in the game by just walking up there, obviously, but for reaching the highest point in the game, just to give you a reason to go up to the mountain and then you just led to get down. The sleds are actually extremely useful. If you don't have one, I recommend getting one. I don't know where this spot is, but it actually looks like a very good building spot. Just wanted to point that out. I instead went to the modern axe area and I used the tents there to get more tarps. On my way, however, I decided to stop at this green dot here to see what was going on. It is a digging site, but again, I don't have a shovel, so I couldn't do nothing at this point in time. After saving and quitting the game a few times to get more tarps, I made my way down to the beach cave. Upon entering a cave, you will find a piece of the story laying on the floor. I decided to set up my tent so I could save the game. And then I continued on through this cave, which was an actual cave system. We went through part of this in the live stream, if you remember, or if you were there to see the live stream, which is why I was not scared at this part when the bass decided to jump scare me. There are quite a few mutants down here i threw a flare but i think the flare got burnt out by the water which kind of sucks but you know flares are flares it is what it is but uh, i would ra I, again you use flares because at least you can see somewhat and it's better to see something than to see nothing uh, i'm not really going to add much of these fights to the game because they're kind of tedious there are for some reason three fingers here and two cannibals it's crazy I feel like there's too much stuff in this cave in one area. That's what I feel like. 
personally. However, I do believe that this game is more of a progressive game, meaning if you just run past stuff and try to find better items to come back later to explore the gate uh, cave thoroughly, that would probably be your best bet. I actually managed to group them up right here and kill them all. So it wasn't that hard this time. I was given a choice here and I decided to go to the left over here. There is a huge, I guess I'm going to call pond, but I know it's not a pond, but whatever, a huge area. And there is actually a shark in the water. And my hunch is that there could be something inside the water and you probably have to kill the shark to go get it. Or it was maybe supposed to be set up as like a jump scare kind of bait thing. Cause if you go to where the light is, there's actually a ramp to just walk into the water. So it could be either or here. I might come back later and explore the water more in depth. I don't know what I did here, but when I picked up the rebreather, my backpack somehow disappeared. I don't know what happened there. Uh, I do remember that I held tab to take out my inventory. But instead of taking out my inventory, it showed liver breather. I don't know why I did that, but that might be part of the reason why my backpack disappeared. So I actually had to come back and do this part over again. I went back to get the rebreather again. This time it didn't glitch out for me. And I went back to go down the right path. I was met with two finger mutants and a blind mutant going down here. I dealt with all three of them pretty quickly and continued adventuring through the cave. That guy didn't stand a chance. There is a radio in the ceiling here for some reason. I'm not sure why, but that is extremely interesting. That guy also didn't stand a chance. There are also babies in this cave. There are also a few babies in this cave. I had finally gotten to the end of this cave and over here, there is a window with, I believe something crawling past and it did come back. I'm not sure what it was, though. I didn't really catch it, but it did come back for a split second and then walked away again, or I guess slid away. I should say when I turned around, there was a taser hanging from the ceiling. I also believe that I might have missed an outfit in this cave, but I'm not 100% sure. But I think there is an outfit somewhere in this cave that I did not see. I'm going to have to come back and check again later. After getting the stun gun, I made my way back to the entrance of the cave and I saved it before something else happened. And that is all I did for this episode. If you liked it, please leave a like. It helps me a lot. Subscribe if you would like to see more. I don't normally do voiceovers, but I had to do a voiceover for this video because I covered a good chunk of the forest and I did not want to leave the chunk out of the experience. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care and bye bye. They call me a girl.